Well, you know, the political process is not meant to get people engaged and involved. The political process, really, when you talk to these people behind the scenes, is meant to discourage people from getting involved who believe in an independent line of thinking and thought. They want useful idiots. They want people that are just going to go in and push the button, whether it be an R or whether it be a D. And the thing is, is that those people that feel despondent or feel like they can't make a difference are only operating on a limited understanding of how the political process works. And if they would just take a moment, just like riding a bicycle, get on, put your foot on the pedals, go that first foot, you'll find that the next foot becomes easier. The next foot becomes easier. Now all of a sudden you've gone 10 feet. And that's the same thing in politics. When you understand, one, the power the average person has, and two, that every person has a unique perspective. That's the thing that I find the most rewarding is when I talk to gun owners and they finally get involved. They're so shocked at, oh, I never thought I could do this. And if we could just get more citizens, Pennsylvania has five million gun owners. I'm hopeful one day to have a rally in Harrisburg where we got 30,000 people and we shut down the whole Capitol. Because then, then we would get a message to legislators and we would really drive the point home. But when we have the problems we do, and we allow others to lie and go in articles and newspapers and TV and don't challenge them, we, we tacitly give them control of the battlefield. And as a Marine, I will never do that because I will not be laying on the floor and butchered like an animal. Somebody's got a gun, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go after them. And if that means politically or in a crazy situation like Orlando, it doesn't matter to me. We're Americans, we fight. That's what we're noted for. And when we yield the battlefield to these anti-gun people, we're letting them win. And that's the greatest sin of all. No guns for you, but for me, it's okay. Uh, that was New York, uh, Charlie Rangel, New York Democrat, uh, coming forward saying average citizens don't need guns, but he does? Well, a law-abiding citizen just shouldn't have to carry a gun. But you're protected by guns all over the place here in the Capitol. <laughs> well, that's a little different. I think we deserve, I think we need to be protected down here. Yep, you heard that right. Charlie Rangel telling the Daily Caller no one in his district should be allowed to use guns for protection except for him. I've made it very clear that I uh, work with the police and instructed them to do everything that they could to make sure that the protesters were able to exercise their uh, right to free speech. We also gave those who wished to destroy space to do that as well. But that's not what I asked. I said, do you believe that their conclusion that an individual's right to bear arms is a constitutional right? If it is a constitutional right, if it is a constitutional right, if it is a constitutional right, then it, like every other constitutional right, is subject to reasonable regulations. This is a ghost gun. This right here has ability with a 30 caliber clip to disperse with 30 bullets within half a second. 30 magazine clip in half a second. Please open the door. They had AR-15s or M-16s. They were pointing at us. They told us, put your hands up in the air. Let us see your hands. They're drawing down on me? And they let the looters run rampant for over a week? Are you kidding me? I really thought they were going to kill me. I really did. They didn't care what your rights were. They were going to deny You're letting the thugs get away with everything and you're coming to honest, good citizens and taking away their protection, and it is wrong. Gun rights advocates say there's always a number of groups working to restrict gun access and infringe on the Second Amendment. And in response, they show up to the state capitol in big numbers. These rights are under attack. Called the Rally to Protect Your Right to Bear Arms, drawing hundreds annually to fill the rotunda, speakers come from both sides of the aisle who agree to support gun rights. Republican, Democrat, 
from urban Philadelphia to the shores of Erie, from the southwest to the borders of New York, uh, people all across Pennsylvania uh, support their Second Amendment right. The keynote speaker was former presidential candidate and advisor to President Reagan, Alan Keyes. The event falls just about a week after gun control advocates held a rally calling for stricter background checks in all Pennsylvania gun purchases. Mike Straub, News 8. The purpose of the rally is to get people together to meet their legislators, to let the governor know, to let these anti-Second Amendment people know that we believe in our rights and we're going to stand up for them. We're going to go to Harrisburg, we're going to go visit the offices. We already were up there at the beginning of April. Some of us from FOAC are be going up there a day early to help, to go visit the offices, to get a hold of the legislators and let them know that we are interested in the Second Amendment and we're there, uh, like in Beaver County. Every representative has stood behind these house bills, these sensible house bills we want to put through except one, Robert Matsey from Ambridge. He's the only legislator. He always says he supports Second Amendment, but he never signs off on it. He doesn't stand up to the plate. We go to Harrisburg. You talk to legislators, everybody supports Second Amendment until it's time to support it and stand up. And that's what we need to do. Put some fire under their feet and get them to support Second Amendment. They swore to uphold the Constitution. Okay, A lot of them swore to do it 15 minutes after they swore to do it, they forget totally about it. We, we started the Second Amendment rally at the uh, state capitol um, more than 11 years ago. We just had our 11th annual rally, uh, Second Amendment, second to none, to protect the Second Amendment, Article 1, Section 21 in, in Pennsylvania. And of course, Article 1, Section 21 is the uh, right to bear arms section um, in our Pennsylvania Constitution, which is worded even more strongly than the Second Amendment in the U.S. Constitution. On the little chart we have, they're red. That means they're just anti-gun. Um, short of a miracle, I doubt any of them are going to say, Oh, all this time we've been infringing on your constitutional rights. How could we, you know? What were we thinking? But um, as long as we go in and present ourselves in a reasonable manner, present our case logically, you know, don't get heated, um, we can, I mean, if you think about it, how can they possibly justify uh, their stance? If you read the laws, they can't even question our right to keep and bear arms. But they're doing it anyhow, and they're trying to pass more laws. So we started this rally to ensure that we had uh, both uh, um, a presence at the Capitol and an opportunity to uh, have Second Amendment advocates that come in from across the state have a chance to talk to their legislators, uh, talk to the legislative staff, and make sure that they know how important it is that they protect our right to bear arms and that uh, there's people watching them from across the state. And coming down just to let people know that we uh, want our legislators and that to know that we support the Second Amendment. And it's very important to keep the Second Amendment to the forefront. So, and I remind everybody, please go out and vote. So, thank you kindly and uh, look forward to a great day. I believe gun owners feel almost like they're an island, like they're uh, uh, put upon, like they don't really know that they have a lot of kindred spirits out there and that they can get involved and make a difference. This, the answer to the problems we have in our country is in the, every American's hands. It's not based in the experts or some lobbyist for a national organization. The answer is in all of us. And if we can just inform ourselves a little bit better, and that's why we've created our website as a tool, and just like a mechanic, 
Citizens need tools and they need to have the confidence that they can make a difference and that's what we have done with F Firearms Owners Against Crime. Started out with four total people at our first meeting and now we're a statewide enterprise. And we created the Second Amendment rallies when everybody was against us. National organizations didn't want to participate. And that was fine because this is not a consortium of groups that is going to require us to take some sort of credit. We're there to try and let legislators know that we feel strongly in our rights and we're not going to allow them to take them away. There's only one thing that all these legislators want. They want to stay in power and they want to be elected. And numbers mean everything. When we walk in there and you see these shirts and you see these people, it would just be amazing if we had 30,000 people there. It would be uncanny. I mean, the news media is already there when we show up. They've heard about it. So I, I, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to quit. Whatever you do, convince somebody. I look at all these people that sit here that don't have jobs, they're retired, or even if they can take a job or have a vacation day, they, I don't know how to express to them, you don't know what you're missing by just, even if you don't do anything, just show up, put on that smock, and it means everything. Yeah, it's a drag, getting up early, that long bus ride, it, it, it's really a lot to put yourself through. But when you're coming back, it's, to me, like going to church in the morning. You might drag yourself going up them steps, most churches have steps, you go in there. When you come out, you're feeling way better than when you went in, because you practice what you believed in. And if you believe in being an American, and being a citizen and being free, you have the right to protect something that was passed to us through the Declaration of Independence and, and the Constitution. And everything that was fought for and the lives that were sacrificed and taken for us to be able to do that, to fight these people that are trying to take all those rights and privileges away from us. If people don't connect to that and feel that they should believe in that and support that by going there and talking to these people that are going to make laws that affect us. It's our inner core that you got to be able to let that come in, that you're a believer in supporting that. And then you have a, a chance to take advantage of a uh, situation where we present opportunity. Yes, please take heart and tell all of your members to take heart that you do have an impact. When you saw how many people were in that rotunda and you saw the Speaker of the House was there and the, and the Majority Leader there, when they see all those people and they hear all those uh, people talking and they hear you roaring, they know, hey, we've got we've to listen to these people. They're serious. They're here. They're, they really mean it. You do have an impact. We, of course we wish we had more. We wish we stuffed every hallway and doorway and there wasn't any room for anybody to breathe in there. Uh, but there were a lot of people there today and we'd like to get more. And we'd like to have more of you up here more often and roaming the halls and, and, and telling the story. Uh, but it does make an impact and I know it's harder for you guys because you're clear on the other side of the state I always think why aren't the people from Bucks County and Montgomery County and and you know some of the other counties Why aren't they here? They're a lot closer. Why can't they come down and contribute more? Um, and some of them are here, but not in the numbers you are here What you know, what is it about Beaver County that you guys are on the vanguard when you're the furthest away? And it's the hardest for you and you give up the most to come here You got to probably have to take a whole day off of work and you got to pay to rent a bus But you're willing to do that uh, and why aren't these other people that are close close by more willing? So we've got to get the word out. We've got to recruit people. We've got to let them know that it is making an impact. That picks Nick's bill, for example. That's the speaker's original bill. It was Tim Krieger's bill. He's pushing it again, but he was there today to talk about it. And you guys being there encouraging him, and many of those legislators around may not have signed. I know some of them aren't on that bill. They're not signed on to it. But hearing all that talk about it, and hearing all the, the, the uproar of the people of how much they want it, and other legislators, they've got to be asking themselves, oh, I better take another look at that. You see, it, you do make an impact. I know it's hard to believe, and sometimes it's not as much of an impact as you want. We all wish it was more, and we do things faster. But you are, you are making an impact. Our Founding Fathers believed that the right to bear arms was not just a constitutional right, but a God-given right.
It's time to get back to that belief and time to let God back into our capitals, hearts, and homes. If you want to stop gun violence, stop allowing our youth to grow up in a nation where they think it's okay to disrespect authority. Stop teaching our youth that no matter what they do, it's never their fault. There's always someone or something else to blame. For the love of God, start teaching ethics and personal responsibility. Instead of chipping away at our constitutional right to bear arms, we should be doing all that we can to keep guns in the hands of good American, American-loving, law-abiding citizens. Citizens who will use those guns to bravely defend our country, our freedoms, our families, and our communities. I'll conclude with a quote that I'm often reminded of, stated by the President of the United States, directed at the great people of this Commonwealth. They cling to their guns and religion. Well, you meant that as an insult, Mr. President, but I will own that comment with pride. Because those of us that cling to our guns and religion are clinging to the First and Second Amendment of the Constitution of the United States of America as our founding fathers intended. gentleman speak upstairs, a new young representative, Ryan Warner, yeah. totally supportive of us. Would you like to thank him? His office is just right there. Why don't we go in and see uh, Mr. Ryan Warner? Okay. like talking about how important guns are to law-abiding citizens. So it's pretty much it's like driven into me. Not by force, but it's just over the years all the impact that it's hit like my first deer, some of my first shooting guns, it's just fun. And now I get to help my niece and nephew shoot their new 22s. You have to, you have to develop an interest in the people in the area that uh, you're working on. To convince them to some degree or another, to one degree or another, that yeah, they're in trouble. Their rights are in trouble. They're in jeopardy. And you have to collect the names of the people that have decided to go ahead and make that extra step and take a day off of work because the rally is on Tuesday. It's a work day for legislators. I mean, you can't go over there on a weekend because they're not there. So we have to go when they're there if you want uh, contact with them. You all know that we've lost one of our justices, our conservative justices, that gave us the two decisions that defended the Second Amendment. It was uh, Heller and McDonald in Chicago. 
It was a five to four decision. If the court would have been equipped the other way, constituted the other way, we wouldn't have had that. And you can bet your bottom dollar, if we get another judge in there, a liberal judge, one of their first pushes is going to be to try to eliminate those. So we're hanging by a thread now, but we just go merrily along our way, and we don't realize it, and we ignore it. So please, think about joining us. Think about somehow getting involved to try to help us. Uh, I wish we had people in general from those people come the lawmakers, from those people come the governors, people that understood, well, first of all, know about the Constitution, understood the Constitution, and realized that we have a nation of laws that are based upon the principles outlined in the Constitution. Governments uh, I think especially our government has that tendency toward tyranny um, and if people are unwilling to put forth the effort to govern themselves then we will always find somebody who is willing to govern us if we aren't willing to govern ourselves in our own best interests there's always somebody that's willing to govern us in their best interest. In the Declaration of Independence in the Constitution, they left us a roadmap uh, um, on how to govern ourselves uh, so that we would not need to um, get ourselves into a situation where our last resort was to choose between being a slave or taking up arms and taking human life to defend our way of life. Um, I really hope that um, there are enough people around today who are willing to take action to let our governments know that we want to govern ourselves uh, because the alternative is to choose between slavery and war and that is a very bad choice, a very poor choice.